Hello and welcome to our practice exam. My name is Katie and I'm your practice examiner. The questions of the test are designed to stimulate the IELTS speaking test. Let's start. What's your name, please? My name is Watku Chamaka Thanks, Samaka. At the beginning of the test, you will be required to provide some IT. But as this is a practice test, we don't need to do that today. I want to begin by talking about yourself. Do you live in an urban or rural area? Currently, I say in an urban area, it is um, a place not far away from town. It is in the state in Nigeria. Um, we are surrounded by many beautiful houses and it is a major area. Okay. Do you see yourself living in a city in the future? No, currently I stay in the city and in the future I hope to move abroad. Hopefully it will be in the city abroad that I will stay. Probably New York or California, as the case may be. Why do people live in rural areas? I think uh, what, what people gain from staying in rural areas uh, is probably the peace of mind. You, know? you have less noises there, less traffic pollution and congestion. The area is spacious and mainly farmland and vast area of things you can farm. Or, I think they majorly have peace of mind and the congestion in the urban centers, you don't really get there. What jobs are available in rural areas? People that live in villages are many farmers. They are predominantly um, farmers and fishermen. Um, here in the north, they also get involved with um, railing cattle and cows. I think there's a major occupation over there. Most of them are not school, they're not literate, so um, these white collar jobs is not usually their profession. Okay, let's move on to the topic of seaside. Do you often go to the seaside? The last time I went to a riverine area, she was probably two years ago. When I was younger, I enjoyed going around there. I used to follow my dad there to fish. He's late now, may so rest in peace. Um, so um, it was quite fun for me growing up. But now I'm more occupied with my work. I work 24-7 as a nurse, so I really don't have time to you know, visit fun places like I usually do. Why do people like spending time by the beach? In my experience, I feel when you are troubled with a lot of things, it's probably nice to go to a quiet area and reflect on those things. You might be suffering from maybe an ailment or an emotional trauma. You do not want people to be asking you what's wrong with you and what's happening or making you get over it when you're not really done with it. It's probably best to sit on your own and reflect on those things and get over it. That's why people occasionally go to beaches or seas or pools or ponds, you know, to spend some time. What do people do at the beach? Um, last year, I went to the beach with my uncle. He came back from abroad, and there are so many people there, lots of people there. What we did mostly was, I did not swim. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised that people go to the beach, but very few swim. They just, you know, socialize with others, chat, drink, eat, and then just enjoy the cool environment. Okay, very good. Now, I want to talk about dentist. Do you mind visiting the dentist? No, I do that every three months. <clears throat> In my line of work, is good to look nice. You know? um, people confer more in you when they when you're attracting and you're nice and social. So one of the keys for a lady is always appearing and very attractive. Okay, great. Why are some people nervous about the dentist? Well, I think um, people have been hearing a lot of things about the feet. 
my roommate when I was still in school told me that the last time she went there, um, it was very painful when they were observing her teeth and she sustained injuries. Stories like this could get to others and they will feel afraid to go near a dentist because they don't want to feel those amount of pain. <laughs> I hear the pain is quite tremendous. That anxiety can make a lot of people stay away from the hospital. Okay, great. Is visiting the dentist expensive in your country? Whooping expensive, <laughs> very, very expensive. Um, in Nigeria here, the NHS is not NHS is not very functional like in other countries. People fund their medical bills themselves and um, dentistry is one of the booming profession here. They, you spend a lot of a good amount of money, you know, trying to take care of your teeth. And I also think that it contributes, you know, to um, making people stay away from the hospital as well. Mm, okay, great, great. Thank you. I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to prepare and one to two minutes to enter. You can make okay. notes if you wish. Here's your paper and pencil for making notes. And here is your topic. All right. Yes, I am going to share your topic. Hold on. I'm about to check your topic right now. Mm. Okay, hold on. Where's your topic? Uh, what was that? Okay, let me just use my Skype. Okay, so here's your topic. You have one minute to prepare for this. Your time starts now. Okay. You may now start speaking. Just last year, I was working um, in Central Hospital, Benin City. Um, is a big firm, one of the biggest in that area. And I enjoyed my stay there until it ended and I was transferred to another state. Going to another state was a huge, you know, choice I have to make because I had my family there and I was enjoying the city. Now I have to choose between my work or my family and my mom was severely ill at that moment and they gave me two weeks to resume. I had to tidy up, take care of my mom and everything within two weeks. To tell you the truth, I was very burdened. I got to the extent that I told them that I wouldn't want to work again. I want to look for something else to do. But then I realized I have so much passion for my job. Aside that, in Nigeria, you hardly get jobs unemployment rate is very high and I wouldn't want to quit my job and start struggling to help my mom and my family. It was really very troublesome for me. But in the end, I decided to go to Eula and start my work again and get a nanny for my mom. I called them all the time to check up on them. And during holidays, when I went back, it was a way of making up, with, making up for my lapses or not being... Um, an involving daughter. Okay, I wouldn't use the word involving because I wasn't around there, but I get involved all the time with her affairs. Thank you. Very good. Now, let's talk about making decisions. What type of difficult decision do governments have to make? Well, I think uh, the government all the time is in the state of dilemma. They have a lot of things they worry about. People accuse them of so many things and they really try their best. They have to decide on um, which or which state or which area is gonna get the best facilities um, and healthcare, even agriculture. And currently in Nigeria, I think the government is probably into politics. Now they are 
deciding on who is going to be the next president and they are all involved in that and yesterday there was a rally over here on choosing and it was raising security concerns and it's also a problem well um probably the most challenging concern here is the issue of security you've heard news about the north insurgency and everything i think is a good challenge and people really stay away from such areas they have a huge burden to make nigeria safe for all. okay thank you should young people be given more decision powers yes i think um Young people have the ability to do a lot. They can create magic out of nothing. You know, the ability to be young and to reason well and take care of yourself is not is a huge challenge, you know, growing up. So um, you in societies where people in power are younger, things are more modern and the things happen quicker and they take risk. Risk that ordinarily older ones will not take. You see younger ones, they take it. And sometimes they could be positive or negative. But in my experience, I've realized that the more risk you take, the more the higher you get to your aim or achieve your purpose in life. Okay, great. Why are elections important? Well, <laughs> um, the election is a process you select who is going to govern you maybe in a country, in a, in a company, is who is going to be the CEO or be in charge of the organization. I think it's very important because it has to be democratic. People should be given a voice to select who they want to be the leader. There's a saying that um, you fear who you respect or you respect who you fear, anyhow they say it, you know. Um, when I choose someone to be my leader, I've accepted the person, you know, and I'm going to obey whatever they do, whatever they say I should. Um, um, However, when someone imposes himself or power on me, I, I, I feel like I'll be resisting, you know, whatever decisions they give or anything they want me to do. That's why um, the press of selection is very important for people to make their choice, and it has to be democratic as well. Great, great. Thank you very much. That's the end of our speaking test. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>